So let's talk about nodes. So the idea with nodes is they store different adjustments for the image. So we have our, our first node here, which we start out with. We can come in and we can adjust the image with several different settings, and then it's just stored within this one node. If we want to add additional adjustments, we can add a, another node and then add even more adjustments to stack on top of our current adjustments. So how this works is it starts out here. This is our source. This is the timeline. So the, the, the file that's on our, our timeline, it will come in here and then it'll come over to our first node. It'll be processed by the first node and then it'll follow the output and it'll go to wherever the output is. In this case, it's just to one second node and then this second node will process it and so, so on and so forth throughout the whole node tree. And then it'll finally make its way over to this little box, which is the output. That's where the final product of the whole node tree will then uh, be located to. So everything will go through the whole node tree to this output, and then that's what will be displayed as the final output when you go to deliver the project. Back to our nodes here, we're now we're going to make an adjustment on the second node. All of your nodes, they can take any adjustments. So you can do any of the adjustments that are down here. You can do any of the adjustments that are in this second area. And also um, over here, you can use the keyframe and you can keyframe adjustments depending on what that, uh, whatever it is that you're changing. So um, this is number two. And then down here, we have corrector two. We can do the little drop down and it'll have all the different parameters that we can keep frame, which is everything. Uh, the other thing that you can do with nodes is you can add a open effect into that node. So if you were to add, let's say a blur, you know, it would be added into this, in, into here and then down here in the OFX, we can keyframe it. So like, let's say we start the blur at uh, zero and then a couple seconds in, we can boost up that blur. So now if we were to play this back, it starts out as zero, and as it works through, it's blurring more. And so there you go, that's how you keyframe. All right, so that's keyframing OFX. Now, let's go into the different types of nodes. Uh, the only, nodes are just nodes and coming into all of these different types of nodes, all they are is the creation of a node, which is like this over here, and then it's being accompanied by something. So we have our node and let's start out with a parallel node. And what's going to happen is it's going to create another node and then it's going to add a parallel mixer. What a parallel mixer is, is it takes adjustments from all of the inputs and you can have multiple, you can have more than one input you can continuously keep adding more parallel nodes in here. But the idea is on the input of the parallel mixer, it will take all of the node adjustments and it'll mix them together into a final output. <clears throat> so if I was to take one node, we'll have our fourth node here and let's just push everything blue. And then on this node, we will take a adjustment and we will put it right here and we will push everything to yellow. And then for this one, we will take everything and we will push everything purple. Okay, let me come into this green one and we will just add a little more saturation so we can understand how this works. And then we will add another node and as we can see, what's happening here is it's mixing this actually might be a little difficult to see here. Let's move these down. All right, so what's happening here is each one of these nodes, they're mixing. So you're taking the purple with a blue and you're mixing it and you're just getting a darker purple, taking the purple and the green yellowish and you're mixing it and you're getting this red and then mixing these two, you're getting a color. If I was to come up here and make a layer node. Uh, right now I'm on five, but if I was to make a layer node, what would happen is it would make another node and then it would be accompanied by a layer mixer. So let's talk about what a layer mixer is. I'm just going to delete that quick. 
and then just come into here. This is one other thing that you can do between a parallel and a layer mixer is you can right click on it and you can morph it into the other. So what you've seen when I switch this from a parallel mixer to a layer mixer is that they, they work a little bit differently now. Now what happens is all of these stack on top of each other pretty much just like that. Whatever is down here will be the final thing to get stacked on top. So when it starts out, it puts this down and then the next one, it'll then put that one down and then it'll go to the next one and it'll put that one down on top. And as you can see, what will then happen is it's coming in, you're setting an adjustment to just this. The rest of this is just an alpha, which means that it's transparent. So there's no settings being, there's nothing being added to that. And then it's outputting that, that, um, that change. So what's happening is I added the blue change, but the blue change is getting layered on top, which means because it's being layered instead of mixed together, it'll just take this and it'll lay it on top. And then as you can see here, this is being laid on top of here. And then this one is just underneath. So let's go over why you would use a parallel over a layer and then a layer over a parallel. So if I was working on a project and I wanted to add some color effects in here and I was adding in my color effects, right? So I have my shot. I really like this shot, but I want to add something up here that's yellow, a lot more yellow. For right now, I could add in another node and I could take this guy and put it up here and then I could take my um, highlight and I could push it, I could push it towards yellow and what's happening now, so what's happening here is it's going to take this blue shot and then we're, we're, since it's the next node and I'm going to add yellow in here, now it's going to mix this blue with yellow and then we get this color here. But let's say we want to add uh, the yellow with the color that's, that's coming out of here. So what we would do is we would just add a parallel node. So we'll delete this quick and we'll add a parallel. And I did that with the keyboard. If you come up here to nodes, you can see all the shortcuts for all of these. So now I have this node here and I want to add that same thing up here and add that in. It's going to, it's very subtle, but because it's pulling from a different source, it's going to mix just a little differently. And they might not be coming from there. They could be coming from other locations because if I want it to, let's say now I have this grade going and I add another node, um, but then I want his skin to look a little more natural. So what I could do is I could make a layer node or a, la a node with a layer mixer and I could say, okay, well this will overlap on top of there and they won't uh, mix together. What I could do here is I could take this, the input for here and pull it from wherever it may be where you had like the skin tones looking the best, you could pull it from there, but I'm going to just pull it from the source and then what I could do is I could come over to my qualifier and I could qualify his skin. And then what will happen when I start to qualify his skin, his skin will then become the mask. So I'm looking at this now. I could make this a little bit better. Come over. We could, because this is all white, we could clean up the white a bit. And then we could add this little bit in there. And now we have his skin in the scene and it pulled a little bit of red over here, which is fine. If I didn't want that, I could uh, pull up a power window and then make the selection just inside of here. So it'll be just this, but it'll still only be the red. So you could do something like that, but it's a little more advanced. But okay, so now I have the skin tones from the source and they're laying over top of my color grade. Okay, that looks good. It looks very contrasting because they're very different. If I wanted to make him feel like a little more part of the scene a little bit more and not so um, contrasty when it comes to color difference, I could come into here and then I could key this. And this is stating how much of an effect this will have as an adjustment. So I could key this down. So like, let's just say it was at one, so we'll do a 60-ish. 
So now we have remotely uh, normal skin tones, but they're slightly affected by the overall color grade. So that's the difference between the layer and the parallel mixers. And you can pull, like I was saying, you could pull sources from anywhere in, in your um, node tree. So now let's go to some of the others. Our next one that we can do is uh, add outside node. How that node works is, let's say I want it to affect um, this lower corner down here. Okay, I want it to affect this lower corner down here and I want it to add, um, let's do purple. I want it to add a purple into this corner here. So we'll just shut this off. Now I have this purple in this corner. Uh, but now I want to add something else outside of here. And I don't want to affect here, but I do want to affect up here. What you could do is you could just add, add outside. And then what happens is it makes another node, but then a connection is also accompanying the creation of that node. And what this is, is at all of these nodes have it, is this is the alpha channel and we're connecting the alpha channel across to this node. So it's saying, okay, all the transparent in here, I want to copy that over to here. And then that's what my selection is for this node. So that's how the outside node works. So now let's go to splitter combiner. So splitter combiner does a little bit more. We'll split these up so I can show you. So what splitter combiner does is it takes this signal, signal meaning all the color values, and it splits it up into a red, green, and blue channel. And then the combiner combines them all again to get a full color image. So in these nodes, we can affect what the red channel, what's happening with the red channel. And the easiest way to show this is if I come into here into node sizing, and then I pan the red channel, you can see my red channel is being manipulated. So I'm manipulating that red channel. And you can do kind of cool things in here where you, let's shift, you know, this one, let's say negative 11, and then we can shift this channel 11, positive 11. Now you have a color shift. So you can do cool things like that. The other thing that you can do is like all of the other nodes is you can add OFX. So you could take the red channel and you could, you know, have that affected by one of these. So let's, um, Let's go back and remove all of those. Let's do a zoom effect to the red channel. So I add the zoom effect into the red channel and I come over to settings. Hold on, click on this one. Come over to settings and then I can, you know, increase the strength of that zoom effect. And you can see in here, you can see here, this is the red channel and this is what's happening to that red channel. And the other one is append a node. And what this does is let's say you have a particular node. So, so far we have a lot of setting, a lot of stuff happening in this, but let's say for this node, I wanted to add, let's say a, a lot on here. So I added a lot right to this node. And let's say I wanted to add that to a bunch of other shots. I could come in here into clips if I had other shots and I could highlight all of those other shots that I wanted and then have this node highlighted and then I could come up to here and append node and what would happen at the end of the node tree for all of those clips, another node would be created and that node would have the same settings as the node that I had highlighted. The final thing that I, the final thing is all nodes, you can have them work with colors in different ways. So if you, I, I'm, I'm working on this one node here. If I right click on it, I can come down here to color space and I can switch between different color spaces. So right now this is on LAB. I have a video explaining how LAB works, but once you would make another node, it would just default to RGB characters. And then all of these characters would just work the same as if it was just any normal node. But you could come in and then, you know, switch it to, all of the other color spaces. So that's pretty much how nodes work within a node tree. Um, if you want it to, uh, this is currently on clip. So all of these nodes will only affect this one clip. If I want it to affect a whole timeline, I could come up here and then it's a completely different node tree. So if you were to group up a bunch of shots, 
um, you would just highlight all of them, right click on them, and then add into new group. You would pick the group, click OK. Once you did that, up here, now you have other node trees that you can work on. So I think that's everything on how nodes work. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Uh, I would say the best thing to do to get a good understanding of how these work is just play with it, honestly. Um, with that being said, my name's JR, and thanks for watching.